On today's JMO with Josh and Joe, we have the weekend of almosts. Ooh, the so close. Almost upsets. We have quite a few games that were almost upsets in the college football world. We go through and break down all of those, including the actual upset, Virginia versus UNC. Ooh. My boy uh, Tony Elliott bringing, you know, keeping the Cavaliers in it. Yep. We talk about that. We go through talk about LSU, how LSU is going to beat Alabama in two weeks. Of course. Um, they destroyed Army. We go through a couple other games. Ohio State, Penn State, Tennessee, Alabama, T- Texas versus Houston, Utah, USC, uh, among others. Then we get to some NFL talk. The Saints are uh, the Saints are boring. I don't like the Saints. No. We're out on the Saints. We're still fans. We're never going to not be fans. But it's just it's terrible watching Derek Carr. It's a no dat for me. No dat. Yeah, we're not we're not we're not we're not on the dat train right now. Um, we go through a couple of other games, including the Browns Colts wild finish, um, the Ravens Lions blowout, and the are the Dolphins frauds? Are the Dolphins frauds? Maybe. Maybe. Then we go into some MLB playoffs. Talk about that briefly, and then uh, that's about it. All right, let's rock and roll. Welcome to Jim Moore, Josh and Joe. It is Tuesday, October 24th. And Joe, <clears throat> it seems like this weekend in college football was the weekend of the almost, almost upsets. It that's seems like. That's a correct a su- assumption or maybe reaction to this weekend. They did have a couple of upsets. They had the Virginia UNC upset. Mm-hmm. Um, surprisingly, the Utah USC was not an upset. I thought that was that was almost an upset. Yeah, it's, uh, it felt like it should have been an upset, but the fact of the matter is Utah just it, it owns USC. Yes, and the Miami Clemson game where Miami won. Was actually almost an upset too. That was not an upset. Oh, really? As, uh, yeah, as weird as that sounds, it was not an upset. Um, yeah, and then we had um, well, Duke Florida State was closed for a little bit, and then it kind of got out of hand in the second half. Same with the Alabama Tennessee game, but we'll uh, we'll get to all those almost almost upsets, almost upsets. Uh, but as usual, let's start with the LSU game. LSU fucking Army. I am not. I don't care if it was Army. I don't care that Army sucks. I don't care if Army is one-dimensional. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We got, what, three interceptions in the first half? Uh, something in three, the, uh, something like that. Three interceptions. Yeah. So we, 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 ha- we got turnovers, held them to basically 42 total passing yards. Again, I don't give a fuck that it's Army. I don't care that they they had 193 total yards. Okay, this was a defense that two a little over two weeks ago was 121st in the nation. Okay, mm-hmm. this is something that we needed to uh, we needed going into the bye week right before Alabama is a confidence boost. It's nice. We needed that. They uh, defense needed something. They needed to see what playing well looks like. Yes. No, I agree. And I, I just it's easy to take for granted these victories like this because i mean obviously you know overmatched team against army whatnot but we'll actually talk about some games later on down the road uh down in this episode that just shows that this type of these type of games can't always be taken for granted yeah um but when you can get some win or can you get some uh wins with other than the score that's where you really make the improvements the wins, that come around. The wins within the game. The wins within the there game. Was a, there was a goose egg. Yes. Yeah, there was a goose egg. There was no points scored. We we let UAB score points yes. last year. Which that's that's like, a that's a sign of focus and discipline that translates over into other games. Right. Um hell, Grambling State scored ten points on us. Like they this is a this is an army team that should have probably scored points on on this defense. Mm-hmm. Like if this would have been at the beginning of the season, yes, points would have been scored on this defense. Um, another side note, well, not maybe a side note, but a uh, big a big note. Number one offense in the country, no big deal, no big deal. Jane Daniels didn't play the entire second half. 
pissed me the fuck off. <laughs> that yeah, that ticked you off a little bit. Yeah, didn't it? fuck that noise, dude. He had four total touchdowns in the first half, like almost three hundred yards passing, bunch of rushing yards. Like, bro, we need to pad his stats. If he's gonna win the Heisman, he's gotta have the stats. Our defense is literally stealing this Heisman from him. Yes. We need the stats. And if you're going to keep kick him out the first fuck, I like all right, I like seeing Nussmeier in there. I like seeing a bunch of our backups in there get some reps, get some get uh get some exper- playing experience. I liked it. It was good. It's probably going to b- benefit us against Alabama because we're going to need especially in the second half, we're going to need those backups to come in and relieve our starters for a, a couple of plays and we need them to slide right on in and basically be our starters. Um it's it play as well as our starters because Alabama is the deepest fucking team. Year in year out, yes. Um, yeah, I liked I liked J- Jaden Daniels. Um, we had a uh, Trey Holly looked good. He's a true freshman, true freshman. Um, all time actually rushing back uh, holds the all time rushing record in the state of Louisiana for our high school for high school mm. for career career rushing yards. That's good. So yeah, no big time big time back big time talent. That's and that's what games like this that you want to see. That's what I'm saying. The wins within the win yep. is that when you see other players start standing out because I'm sure they knew what they had in Trey Holly, but at the same time you're not going to replace him with Logan Diggs, who's been been playing very well yep. thus far this season. But this is the game where he can kind of come in. They can see exactly what they've been seeing on the practice field, and and then like you said, when there's big moments. Maybe like Logan Diggs, uh, like gets tired or something like that during an Alabama game. They know what they've got in Trey Holly. They can throw him in, and he can just plug and play. John Emery Jr. got a couple of reps. Um, Caleb Jackson got a couple of reps. I was happy to see that. It was about fucking time. Um, Thomas Jr. and Malik Neighbors are our, our, rece- our wide receivers are stacked. We're yeah. fucking stacked. It's awesome. Um, it's fun to watch. I. Uh, it's, Especially it's, that that reach that reach catch that Brian Thomas had yeah. for the eighty nine yard touchdown. Oh. I don't think that cornerback thought he had that ball. Nope, nope, not even close. Um, but yeah, it's fun. I love. Uh, it's fun to watch LSU off play offense this year. It's uh, it's it's it is literally reminiscent of two thousand nineteen. Yeah, uh, I'm starting to see all those you know through the first seven games um, stat comparisons with Jaden Daniels and Joe Burrow. Not at all fair in the sense that, like, I love I love looking at him because Jaden Daniels is playing amazing, but not at all fair in the sense that by this point in the season, LSU had played, like, four top ten teams. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in 2019, um, we do not have that type of schedule this year. We've played Florida State is the only top ten team that we have played. Um, yeah. So, I... And I like it, to think that they have their... Each, they have... Each their own identity, too. You know? Because, like, yeah, they're both explosive offense. We both love them. But there's there's some differences with it. Like, <clears throat> like Jaden Daniels, obviously, is the big the big one that comes to mind. Right. Running, explosive runner. Way more explosive than Joe Burrow was. But Joe Burrow had more of the arm. Like, he just, and, like, his receivers were, gosh, they were so good. Yeah, that I mean, he did have the benefit. Well, but I think when all said and done, I think Malik Neighbors and Thomas Jr. are going to be two of the. They're going to be in the. They might not be Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson elite, but they're going to be. I think they're going to be good NFL uh, quarterback or wide receivers. Yeah, but they have a little bit different style than what Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson had. You know, we were so spoiled. Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> and then I think the running backs are a little bit different. Logan Diggs, straight line, one cut. You know, finds the open zone in the running. Uh, Running zone, really good. I think Clyde edwards alaire was the heart of that that yeah. LSU 2019 offense. Oh um, yeah, for sure. Just you when see you have, that little short guy chugging along, you're like, oh, if he can do it, let's go. Yeah, exactly. So I I, I like them both. I like them both. I, they're both um, really fun to watch. Per- perfect timing going into the bye week, right before Alabama. Alabama themselves, they don't look uh, they. They look defeatable, and I uh, I don't want to get too high on myself, but I think like their offense isn't looking great. I mean, and that's our our defense is our weak spot. Their pass offense is their weak spot. So I I'm kind of I'm getting pretty excited. Like if you would have asked me about um, this game two weeks ago when we played Ole Miss, I would have been I would have told you that Alabama was going to kill us. Yeah, I'm 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 kind of going back on that. 
Well, that's a two-part uh, statement there. So, like, yes, Alabama looks defeatable, but at the same time, they are still winning. So, like, that's that should, you know, still be in mind. Like, hey, look, Alabama is a very well-coached team. Like, obviously, we know who's, you know, heading that ship. Um, but at the same time, you're right. They all, they do look kind of defeatable. And if I'm being honest with you, LSU kind of matches up well with them. That's what I'm saying, dude. Like, I'm getting excited from a fan's perspective. Like, I got, obviously, you got to stay focused because it's fucking Alabama. Mm-hmm. And you're playing Nick Saban, the best college coach of all time. But from a fan's perspective, I'm excited. I like I, I kind of see a way to beat them. Like, yep. it, you know, you've, you just envision it. Yeah, I, I just I can see it. If I can just picture it in my brain, I get excited for it, you know? Yep. And my brain goes in a lot of different places. So, um, But, yeah, great great momentum going into the bye week. Rest up. Heal up to some of the injuries. I'm sure there's some. Um, but, yeah. You got anything else in this game? That's about it. It was fun to watch. Um, let's get to uh, Southern Miss versus South Alabama. The only, t- the only reason I'm bringing this up is because uh, – it's your alumni, South Alabama's. Uh, they're 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 a force, man. They're they're looking pretty good this year. I love them. Like, and I I did I attended uh, South Alabama for for a semester as well. And so like I they they hold a little spot in my heart. Yeah, yeah. I, I I you know partied a little too hard, but and, and didn't really uh, make it past that semester. <laughs> but uh, you know <laughs> I, I like I like South Alabama. I lived in Mobile, Alabama for a while. Like. Uh, it's fun. It's fun to watch them do well in something other than baseball. Yeah, so. I, I think every every good and passionate college football fan needs to have like maybe like a blue blood, like a big FBS, uh, you know, team that they follow, and then they also need to have like one that they like that's a little bit more of like a smaller school. It's your blue collar. So yes. you you need your white collar school and your blue collar school. Exactly. A lot of people in Louisiana have. White collar LSU, blue collar Tulane. Exactly. Um, Joe, on the other hand, white collar LSU, blue collar South Alabama. Yeah. Not so. saying we don't like Tulane. We like Tulane. I mean, they're they're New Orleans team. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it, South Alabama is fun to root for. They, no. they destroyed Southern Miss fi- fifty five to three. Yeah, great win. Um, two and one in the Sun Belt right now. There's three teams in two and one in the Sun Belt West right now that's battling it out, and um, so going to be pretty exciting to watch but yeah south alabama they've, they've got this uh head coach right now that's actually i, I really like them they play good ball they they actually do play like a good off they play good offensive ball but also good defense uh kane womack womack kane Wan womack womack nice so yeah he's been there since 20 um is he, yeah 2020 is he a big guy he sounds like a big guy name he's a big guy he's a big guy right. he's a big guy right, yeah you can't have a name like Kane Womack and be skinny. Like, he's I'm definitely sorry. he's definitely got the vibes of a um a Brian Dayball. Nice. That's perfect. That's what I need. Yeah. Kane Womack. And right, Brian cool. Dayball, that's a big guy's name. That's Dayball. a big guy. Yes, that's a big Dayball. guy. Big big guy name for sure. Uh but yeah, congratulations South Alabama. Good deal. Um let's see one of those almost games. Oklahoma versus UCF. Gus Malls on, man. You were this close, brother. You were one two point conversion away. He, he got too tricky. He got too much into the Halloween spirit. He yeah. got too tricky with it because, honestly, yes, I, I know the spe- the criticism that was coming from everybody was that, oh, why would you do like a lateral double pass for you know the two-point conversion? But if you watch that game, dude, he was doing end arounds. He was doing trick plays all game long. Like, that was his signature. And, and, and honestly, schools – Smaller schools should take note of this. Like, you have nothing to lose here. Everything to gain. You beat Oklahoma, man. That is a signature win. That is going to get you paid, brother. That is how you get paid, and that is how you put your school on the map. So, yeah, bring out all the fucking stops. Fuck it, dude. You got nothing to lose, man. You're This is a giant payday for your school anyways. Like, you're going to Oklahoma. You Nobody expects you to win. Go out and fucking do something. And the, he almost did it. The only criticism criticism that I had with that was he did a he did a lateral pass to the left side when the running back was a right handed thrower. So like that would have been way much better if oh, he now did you're it. To cr- the, no, okay, you're critiquing. Gotcha. I'm critiquing it a little bit. Yes, it, 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 that was the only thing I hate, I didn't like about that call. But as far as the double pass goes, oh uh, don't yeah, give it to me. Yeah. Like I'll I'll take that. But all day. Um, it was not a. Uh, it was it was a pretty good game for Dylan Gabriel, who actually used to play for UCF and Gus Malzahn. Malzahn. 
Um, oh, that's right. <clears throat> yeah, he used to play there. It was a nice little revenge. I wouldn't even call it a revenge game. It's just like you always like to beat your former team, you know? Yeah. Or maybe he kept it close because he, you know, he actually still has, you know, something in his heart for him. Maybe. Maybe. Um, or maybe Gus Malzahn knew how to play defense against him. He actually That's di- true. He, he, he played. He, <laughs> Dylan Gabriel had three touchdowns in like two hundred something yards. I don't think he's he's not a he, he's not a Heisman watch. He was it was fun to have him in the conversation a little bit because you know it's it's it's. It sucks. The Heisman race sucks whenever one person is just running away with it. You know what I'm saying? There is no Heisman discussion. You know what I'm You know, it's just, so it kind of sucks. Yeah, especially from a media standpoint. There's nothing to hype about. There's just, yeah, it's just running but, away with it. Yeah. I think Dylan Gabriel's out, though. I think it's. I think he's out. He's not putting up enough numbers. Um, you Oklahoma is 7-0. and That's one thing he has going for him. And they're, they're still undefeated. Uh, I don't know what their schedule looks like coming up, but... Um, I'm sure they got. Oh, they got Kansas, Oklahoma. State. Oh, Jesus Christ! They're gonna go undefeated. Um, <laughs> they, as of right now, they they only play one ranked team all season, and that was Texas, and they won. So they have Kansas, Oklahoma State, West Virginia, BYU, and TCU. I don't. Uh, see... I'd watch out for that Oklahoma State game. They're playing some ball right now. Oklahoma they started State off... got pummeled by South Alabama. Yeah, at the beginning of the that that was in no that was like three games ago. I think it was South Alabama, wasn't it? No, I don't think it I think that's another year you're talking about. <laughs> Wait, no, dude, they Oklahoma State got pummeled by a nobody this year. Yeah, uh, South Alabama, 33 to 7. Was the third game third game of the season. You remember that? Oh, was it this season? Yeah, yeah it was this season. It Holy was shit. South Alabama. Okay, I I know I'm, Okay. I, I know my things. I was for sometimes. some reason I thought it was a uh, no, last year. No. So, um yeah, no, Oklahoma State, that's what we were talking maybe Mike Gundy is done. Thirty-three to seven. Bro. That's right. Yeah, we yeah. were talking about that. So, um, I don't. I, I don't really think that's going to be a big problem for Oklahoma. Other than the only factor that they have is it's a rivalry game, kind of, kind of a rivalry game. They're both in the same state. I think they were trying to make it something. But yeah, no, I don't. I don't think Oklahoma State has the talent to keep up with them. I think they'll. They might. They might keep it close in the first half. That's about it. Yeah. But yeah. Um, Oklahoma, they're, 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 they're good. They'll go to the college football playoffs. They'll, 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 they'll finish the, the year undefeated. Um, the only thing, and I don't think Sony Dykes has it in them this year to beat them, but the only thing I can think is maybe TCU at the end of the season. But, uh, they're, 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 they're not, not, they're not very good. They're this not year. very good this no, year. No. So maybe, maybe w, WVU might pull out, pull out some magic or something, you know, good old, uh, what's his name out there? Neil Brown. Neil Brown? Yeah. Maybe yep. he can pull out something. Uh, but you, got, you got anything else? That's about it. All right, let's get to the probably the game the game of the day. Ohio State versus Penn State. <clears throat> um, did not see this being a defensive battle. I uh, was thoroughly surprised. I was kind of disappointed. I was actually kind of hoping for a uh, nice little nice little uh, air raid. You know, I, wanted, I, I like watching this game and seeing 30 points on each side. I do. Yeah. But honestly, have we gotten that from this game? Not in a while. Yeah, I don't. I feel like it has been still like a defensive slugfest. But is it is it time to start questioning James Franklin a little bit? And honestly, it's not really like I don't think there is a way to fire him. But he is two and fifteen against top ten teams. And he, this really? man, and this man is getting paid ten million dollars a year. And yeah, I actually went through the archives of uh, college uh, sports uh, football reference. Oh, and so found, you went and looked this up? You I looked this up. You didn't up. see it like on a stat nugget or something? No, no. I actually looked up the physical evidence on this. Yeah, he's two and fifteen on t- against top ten teams, and he's getting paid ten million dollars a year. I just like look that kind of that that stat's kind of flying under the radar a little bit. Yeah, but. At the same time, he still is getting them 10, 10 win seasons, you know. So like, it's a it's a Mark Rick situation. Like, yep, yep. I I mean, do you continue on with that, or do you have to like, you know? I, I guess you can continue on until you find this perfect situation, like a Kirby Smart, to take him uh, over the top. That is one. That is a luxury. It's of a that, luxury of yeah. that situation. Yeah, Mark Rick's a good comparison because yeah, Mark Rick, dude, he took Georgia double digit wins every single year. Multiple SEC championship games. 
I was he in a national championship game? I don't think he ever even went to the national I championship. I don't think game. he ever went to a national championship. And that either. man had Matt Stafford and AJ Green on the same team. <laughs> yeah. How? Like how? Right? Brother? I, and I I believe No Sean Marino was no, on that same team too. I, I I wouldn't doubt it. No Sean Marino was around the early early to mid two thousands. I think. No, I know No Sean Marino and. Uh, and Matthew Stafford were on the same team together. I just don't know if like AJ, AJ Green, Green was, crossed that path. Might have been a little bit after, uh, but I want to say he was on oh, the I same do, team. I do too. Um, but yeah, it, that's a good comparison. Mark Rick is yeah, he's James Franklin is the Mark Rick of of the Big Ten. Yeah, that's pretty much what what it boils down to. Um, let's see. I think I think Penn State kind of compa- they abandoned the run. They didn't run the ball very much. Like uh, if you take obviously the quarterbacks rushes out. Um, they ran the ball 19 times between three guys. Uh, they, I just think they, I don't know. I think they could have ran the ball a little bit more. They, or they could should have ran the ball a little bit better, I guess. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't really get a chance to watch this whole game. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. Penn State just can't, can't win, can't win the big game. I, um, uh, I think Mar- Marvin Harrison Jr. might be the best wide receiver behind Malik Neighbors, obviously, but Marvin Harrison Jr. is so fucking good. He, he honestly, he was the the deciding factor in this game. He, him, and um, that tight end Stover. Mm-hmm. Stover had some big time catches. They they bailed um, Ohio State out. I'm still not. A, I'm still not sold on McCord. Um, I, I'm not either. I'm not. Uh, what he's a junior? Yeah. I, he, he'll definitely need to come back for his senior year. But yeah, I'm not sold. He doesn't look. I don't know if it's just because I'm used to li- watching like C.J. Stroud and Justin Fields and all of them, but um, yeah, he just doesn't seem like he's it. But you got anything else in this? Uh, that's about it. It was a close game the whole time, so it was nice. Uh, let's see. Let's get to Mississippi State versus Arkansas very, very briefly. Uh, this game sucked. This game was terrible. I uh, It was 7-3 like the entire game. It was not a game that Arkansas could lose. No, they're, they're six in a row right now. They have yep. not won a single SEC game. Lost six in a row. Are, is Sam Pittman on the hot seat? Oh, definitely. I mean, you, you know it's hot because he fired his offense coordinator. When yep. you start when you start firing people, that's your, that's when your seat is hot. Yep, that's your last ditch effort to like save salvage what you have. Yes. Um. Yeah, but here's the thing: like they, he gets his teams up and ready to play. Like he's played everyone tough. He hasn't been blown out except for maybe the Alabama game. Was it Alabama? No, not even the Alabama game. Not he even was, the Alabama game. No, he played, game. The, he played the Alabama game close. Right, yes. I think every single loss has been close, yes. The only one is the Texas A&M game that wasn't a one-score game, and that was 22-34. to 34. All the other games were one-score games. Well, what I was going to say, and that's why my, my note was he couldn't lose this game. Because he could lose those games and be competitive, but he can't lose this game and be competitive to a Mississippi State. Right, because so he lost to BYU, LSU, Texas A and M, Miss Ole Miss, Alabama, and Mississippi State. Now, LSU, A and M, Ole Miss, Alabama. Those losses, people will be like, okay, that's fine. That's fine. You lost to actually really good teams. BYU is actually turning out to not be that bad. They're actually, um, I think that what's their record? They have their record is, um, yeah, they are they're they're five and two. So they 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 actually are a decent team. Um, Mississippi State, on the other hand, that's one of those teams you got to beat. You got to yep. beat. You got to beat them. Um, yeah. Good, but I guess congratulations to Zach Arnett. Um, Mississippi State. They're uh, what, what's their record? They are um, four and three. They got. A couple of decent games coming up. Auburn, Kentucky, A and M. They could win. Uh, they could win two out of those three. I don't yep. know. They could do. Yeah, they could be three and one going in, or uh, yeah, finish the season three and one going into Ole Miss, going into the Egg Bowl. So they they definitely have a chance at going to the to a bowl game. I just wanted to just wanted to <laughs> say how bad this game sucked. Yeah, it was just terrible. Look, Sam Sam Pittman definitely a hot seat. It's good good content to talk about. Um, head coaches being on the hot seat, you always want to see when you know whenever it comes to Black Monday, who's going to be fired. Sam Hunt, Sam Hunt, Sam Pittman didn't do himself any favors. 
I wonder if he's going to be fired before the end of the season. <clears throat> um, let's see. Let's get to the Minnesota Iowa game. This is a bit the the Big Ten game of the year. This is the ultimate Big Ten game. That's it. <laughs> I know Iowa didn't have McNamara, um, which kind of sucks, but they uh, <clears throat> the hell they they were quiet six and one. They actually it wasn't that quiet. They were they they were six and one, and it 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 was just it was, it just seemed like they were they had a worse record than that. Yeah. You know, it, it, I, for some reason, it seemed like they were they were like a four and three team. I'm trying to remember exactly how the divisions are going to be played out now that USC and UCLA are coming into the Big Ten and all the other teams. I think there's there's a couple more teams, but yeah, there is. Um, with the expansion. But at this, so I'm curious to see because I, I mean the big talk has been the Big Ten West, how you know how much of a difference that is of a um, division than in the other division, the mm-hmm. East. Um, so yeah, um, it'll be interesting to see how that changes, how they're able to change that. But let's talk about the real, the real storyline of this game. What's that? It was the punt return? Oh yeah. The punt return. Cooper DeJean, uh, DeJean, I believe, uh, runs back the punt punt return. And the controversial call of the illegal fair catch. Was he – do you, do you think he was trying to, like, ward off somebody? Or was it was that an actual fair catch and then he, he just played it off like it wasn't? It was definitely – he was definitely warding off and directing traffic because you could tell the finger. The, uh, a lot of times whenever the hand – the hand is up and like and just like in a, a high five like stance. That usually means like he's like waving, you know, as a fair catch. But even though his hands was making slight circles, you could tell he had that pointer finger up. Was it about? Was the hand above his head? The the hand was below his head. Well, then there you go. That's a, I don't understand. Isn't it supposed to be clear cut? Hand above the head, that's a fair catch. If the hand's below the head, it's a, it's not I a think, fair catch. I think the circular motion was the thing that really got was the thing that was the what they pointed out. Still, to put it this way, Minnesota sideline didn't say anything. The reaction during the play didn't make any motion that it was an illegal fair catch. The players didn't stop. The refs didn't call a flag. And everybody continued the game. It, it like if they would have thrown a flag during the game, I get it. Maybe discuss about it and then like. Oh, so this is like a uh, kind of a hindsight thing. Like yeah. people are looking at it. After well, no, 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 no. The thing is, is that it was more of this call was made when they were uh, doing a instant replay. Mm. They, they were doing an instant replay, and the. The announcers thought they were like, "Oh, hey, did he step on the sideline? He was pretty close to the sideline, type of thing." He was like, "No, he's still in." So they were they were baffled as well. And right. then whenever the call came out, so I just I don't I don't like a game that's called with a a flag during a instant replay. Right, right. If it's not called on the field, then and it's not challenged, then don't fucking call it. Yeah. I mean, I, look, that's a part of the game sometimes. Like, sometimes the refs don't make some calls sometimes, so you just let it as is. Mm-hmm. But, like, I just don't think there was disputable video evidence that showed right. that. So so basically what happened was the guy was going, to, he was going to catch the punt. He was directing traffic with his hand, made a circular motion with his hand, and it looked like it could have been a fair catch. But it wasn't because he was. It was below his head, and so what happened was they caught it. Everyone was fine. They did. They finished out the play. They went to go review the play for a to see if he stepped out on the sideline, and ended up seeing that he called. He ended up changing it and saying he called fair catch. Yes, it was illegal. Illegal fair catch motion right. or something like that. As far as you can't make a fair catch motion and and run the ball. And this was late in the game too. So oh, late it, in the game, it, it was a deciding factor. Iowa's it, offense sucks. It's not like they were going to move the ball any other way. Right. So it it was it actually yeah they probably that's it it's what made them lose. Yes. So, yeah. It it was tough. It was a good, very controversial call. Um, we had a couple of those actually. Um, <clears throat> But uh, we'll get to those. We, you got anything else on this? That, that was it. That was the only storyline. It really was. Yeah. Um, Tennessee versus Alabama. Did Al- Alabama must have drank Michael's secret stuff at halftime because they were a completely different team. T- Tennessee, if you look at that first half, the Tennessee was going to win that game. 20-7 to seven at halftime. Tennessee was winning that game. I, I, I think they what they scored one touchdown 
in the the entire second half? Nope. They didn't score at all. Nope. Not <laughs> even a single. Damn. So Alabama went twenty-seven in nothing in the second half. Twenty-seven unanswered points. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I don't know if that's a uh, knock on Josh Heupel or just a testament to how good at good at halftime adjustments Nick Saban is. I, I think this team, this Alabama team, is all coaching. I, to be honest with you, typically I, when you see an Alabama team, there's usually just a plethora of real, really good talent, like exceptional talent, like a Derrick Henry, somebody that's just a fucking alien or something like that. They, right. They but, do recruit aliens. Yes. They, they, have, they, but, they have been known to do that. But the aliens have been going to Georgia lately. Right. But... <clears throat> Um, yeah, so, but you don't really see that with this team. Yeah, Joe, um, what is it, Joe, not Joe Milrow, um. Jalen Milrow? Jalen Milrow. I'm thinking of Joe Milton. Joe Milton, who was on the other side of the ball. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but Jalen Milrow, he, yeah, he is kind of a specimen in himself. He's a, he's just he's a, not, he's an athlete, he's just not great at quarterback. He's just like a linebacker playing quarterback. Yeah, that's essentially what it is. But, um, but yeah, but at the same time, there's nobody else. I mean, the running backs, I wouldn't say he's like an, ex- he's not like a Najee Harris, Derrick Henry. Uh, McClellan? Yeah, McCollin, I I just don't see him. I mean, like even Gibbs, Gibbs wasn't like he was like a big specimen, and but he was he was speedster, at least. Um, I I just don't see that from this Alabama team. So like, would you would you say this is Nick Nick Saban's best coaching job ever? That's what I would say. That's exactly what I'm saying. This team is strictly coaching. Like they are so just. This is a testament to how good of a coach is. Has nothing to do with the talent that's on Alabama. Yeah, because most of the time Alabama just can kind of breeze through everything. Right. You, when you think of Alabama, you think giant giant offensive linemen that are talented as fuck, an alien at running back, so two of the best receivers, and a quarterback that's competent enough to be able to throw to them. Exactly. And then the so yeah okay I get it I get it and then obviously you know you got stud defensive linemen always have one linebacker that's by far the best in the nation and then one stud. Uh, cornerback and a good safety. Like, yeah, that's a, a staple of of uh, Nick Saban team right there. Yeah, and a terrible kicker. <laughs> a terrible kicker. And a terrible kicker for somehow somehow. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. That, so yeah, this might be Nick Saban's best coaching job ever in his entire career. I, I, I have to give him props career. for that. Um. But yeah, uh, Jesus, it was um. They uh they started the second half with a forty six yard touchdown pass and it just kinda went went downhill from there. They like I said, Tennessee had seven possessions, no points in the second half. I don't think Joe Milton ever checks his blind side. Mm-mm. That man that man got sacked every time from his blind side. Yes. Yes. Um and they <laughs> the offensive line maybe were just playing playing a prank on him. I don't know. Uh but you you got anything else in that? That's it. Uh the Tulane versus North Texas the test is done. This was, I think, their hardest game, and then now they have a uh, very easy – Tulane has a very easy schedule coming uh, down the stretch. Makai Hughes, Pratt, they're all played – it's basically Tulane ball. Willie Fritz has got them playing Tulane ball. They're going to win out. They're going to go to a nice little bowl game. Maybe a New Year's Six? Maybe a New Year's Six game. We'll see. I don't know. Um, they did beat USC last year with Caleb Martin playing. So. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll Caleb, see. Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams, yeah. Caleb Martin's on the Heat. He's yeah. He yeah. plays for the Heat, or yeah. he might have got traded. I don't know yeah, I think he actually did make an think off, it, se- I, off season move. Yeah, I think he got traded. Anyways, the uh, the NBA started, so that's been started today, so that's been on my mind. Uh, but yeah, good job, Tulane. Um, Texas versus Houston. This is an, another almost. Um, this was Houston. I think Texas just got up really early or really big, really early, and just took their foot off the gas. Yeah, and you can't do that at uh, away from home. No, uh, especially against Dana Holgerson. Yep, Dana Holgerson. Credit to Dana Holgerson because even though they got they were down early and big, they did not panic. Dana did not panic. Houston did not panic. They climbed their way back into this and actually almost beat Texas. Even though Quinn Quinn Ewers went out in the third quarter, I get it. They they were still at that point. They were still climbing back. Like mm-hmm. they were doing, they, they had tied it, I believe, and was only down by three whenever Quinn Ewers went out. I be, I, I think I got a. Oh um, yeah, no, Quinn Ewers didn't go out until the fourth quarter. <clears throat> I think it was at the end of the third. 
I don't think he it was very late. He, he didn't. He didn't play in the fourth quarter. I know that for sure. So probably the end of the third. Yeah, yeah I believe it was the end of the third. Um, but yeah, credit to Dana Holgerson and Houston. Man, they got they. I think they had another really tight game that they against a really good team. Um, I might have just made that up. Yeah, I did just make that up. Oh, it's all I, good. I thought it was. It was a tight game last week against West Virginia. Just continue with confidence next time, and then we'll just make everybody believe it. Right. That'll that will it, that'll work. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was that West Virginia game. The, the crazy West Virginia game. Oh at the end, yeah, the yeah, last, yeah. Like the last like forty five seconds was amazing. Um. But yeah. Good job. Good job. Uh. This is this is a lot a big loss. The, if there was ever a win that was a loss for a team, this was the win that was a loss for Texas. <laughs> Yes, yeah, I will have you to won say it, that. But you won, but at what cost? Yeah. My biggest thing from this game was the uh, the third down, whenever it was a minute 30 left on the clock from the 10-yard line. Because, um, I mean, Houston was going down. They were about to score. Yeah. And then they, they ran the ball, and it really did look like it was a first down. I mean, mm-hmm. Tim Brando was in the um, in the booth. He was basically making like the call. making the call and just was like, hey, I, I don't know why they're not – you know, Reviewing. challenging this. I feel like that doesn't happen very often anymore. Like you, you can challenge the spot of the ball, and like I feel like it needs to happen more often than it does. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the analytics are showing bad signs of it. It's just, or maybe, and that's because coaches suck at you know challenging it. I'm I'm out on analytics, by the way. Okay. I'm done. I'm done. done. Yeah, okay. I'm not done. a believer anymore. No, no. It was fun for a couple of years. I'm out. It's Even a, in the NFL, it I'm was done. a trend. It I'm was a done. Trend. It, and like I think that. What it did was it brought, like, the trick plays, like, going for it on two and things like that, like, going for it on fourth down. I think it brought that um, to where it needed to be. It brought it to 2023, and now they threw analytics out and it's going by feel. They're going for it on fourth down because it feels like they should go for it on fourth down here. And I think they're going for two because, strategically speaking, later down the road, it's going to be a better idea. Like, I don't know. I'm not saying statistically. I'm saying strategically. Maybe it was like new age uh, philosophy, trying to question old um, standards and traditions, and basically the analytics fa- figured out, hey, they're actually doing the right move. Yeah, let's just change it up a little bit. They like they were changing it up to see if that was the better move, but then they figured out from analytics that the way that they've been doing it is the right way. Is the right way, but they did, like I said, they did take some of the stuff that some of the the stuff analytics said to do. And is incorporating it into the old way. And I'm not going to lie. I love it. I think it's better. You got anything else on this? Uh, that's about it. Um, all right. So actual upset. UNC UNC versus Virginia. Dude, this was in Chapel Hill. Virginia out of nowhere. Virginia out <laughs> of nowhere. Tony Elliott got these guys fired up. I didn't even know that was that was the coach's name. His name's Tony <laughs> Elliott. Bro, I like this guy. I like this guy. He's a... Uh, he they overcame a ten uh, a ten point deficit in the second half, like not they were down by ten points in the second half. Yeah, which really is a, typically a telltale sign that the the better team was going to run away with this. Exactly. But remember when I talked about earlier in the episode how you shouldn't take these small victories for granted. Mm-hmm. This is exactly what I'm talking about. A one in five team coming into Chapel Hill and getting pulling out a victory like this, coming back from ten points behind. Yep. Like, yeah, that's see, that's the thing. You got to close out on these teams that you need to. Maybe just maybe Tony Elliott just starts off slow. He's a, he has some bad losses too. I'm looking James Madison. They, he lost to James Madison. Well, James Madison's undefeated right now, so that's I, yeah. But they're <laughs> they're an FCS team though. No, they're they're oh they they're FBS now. They're this is the first year that they're, they're FBS. FBS. Okay, yeah. All right. So yeah, what no, no. You? James Madison is a storyline right now. Yeah, they are a storyline. Um, but yeah, so they lost Tennessee, James Madison, Maryland, NC State, Boston College. They didn't have a great. It's not a, not something to write home about. But they got the W against UNC. Uh, Drake May actually had a decent game. 24-40, well, he threw it a lot, but 24-48, um, 347, two touchdowns and an interception. Is he out of the Heisman watch? <clears throat> yeah, because he wasn't really into it. Like, yeah, he was on the outskirts of it, but Outside he wasn't looking, Yeah, yeah he, he wasn't really in it, into it, so he had to have all the cards fall for him, and yeah. this is not one of those cards right. that fell for him. Nope. 
Um, but yeah, congratulations, Tony L. in Virginia. This is uh, I think UNC might have underestimated them. They're they're the big the UNC's kind of <laughs> you think a little bit. They the but here's the thing: UNC's kind of like the big dogs in in the AFC in the ACC. They're like the Alabama. I don't, they're not the Alabama of the ACC, but they're like the Alabama and the ACC in that all the teams are going to get up to play them. They're kind of like took over the Clemson role. Yeah, yeah. Mac Mac Brown has definitely got them back on the top of uh, ACC. They still have probably an inside shot to get the um, go to the ACC championship. Oh yeah, if they went out. I I don't see them. I, I'm pretty sure they they're going to make it. But um, yeah, this is good. I like the. I always love good upset in, in college football. Um, let's get to Utah USC, another almost upset that is weirdly almost an upset. When you look at this, you'd think, "Oh, wait, no, this was an upset." No, Utah is ranked number thirteen. Um, USC is ranked number twenty-four. Mm-hmm. So this wasn't an upset, but it looks like an upset on paper. It conf- yeah, it confuses my brain a lot when I look at this. But um, yeah, congratulations, Kyle Whittingham. Um, Old ball coach, old ball coach in, in Utah, using his defense to to win to win games. I have to compare the him to Nick Saban this year. Oh yeah, just the coaching job that he has done, with like without he, without his starting quarterback, without his starting tight a star tight end, mm-hmm. um, and some other yeah, injuries. Cam, Cam Rising's still not not there yet. Yeah, uh, which I want to get to a point after that, but um, yeah, I. I Kyle Whittingham, I honestly, I I really think he deserves props for what he's been doing this year. I mean, I don't know if it's coach of the year type of thing, but it's got to be up there. I want to say something. I think Sion, I don't know, I'm going to butcher his name, but Sioni Vakai, Sioni Vakai, he is, he is the Utah safety. Again, let me repeat that. He is the Utah safety. Safety. He is the starting safety. He had nine carries, 68 yards. And five catches, 149 yards, and two touchdowns. See what I'm saying? He's just he's just doing whatever it takes to win. The safety. Yeah. This, this is Utah's Travis Hunter. Yeah. This is the this guy is the man. Yeah. I was looking him up, dude. He is the fucking shit. He is just a fucking stud athlete. He's a like a, a Hawaiian or something. He, I I don't know what I don't know what his ethnicity is, but he he looks like a Hawaiian, and he is just fucking freak athlete. It's awesome. Love it. Yeah, dude. Two way players. I, let, let's make college two way players again, or let's let's start that actually. Yeah, I don't think again. On, well, yeah, college back in the day used to have all all they were with two way players, right? It was a lot of two ways. A players. lot of two way. Yeah, make make college two way players again. Yeah, exactly. All right, yeah, we I'll, love I'll, the Deion Sanders. We love the Travis Hunters. Yes. We love the yes. Even what well, was Charles Woodson? Charles Woodson. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Come on, these the, the, you know these kids are fucking athletes, dude. We could have used Tyron Matthew as a wide receiver. Yeah, easy for sure, dude. Guarantee it. Um, but yeah, they, this was um good for Utah. Good for Utah. They are they are um they are here to stay. Can uh, we can we mention how you know, like back to what I said at the beginning of the podcast? Utah owning USC. Yeah, they do. I don't think USC is actually joining the Big Ten. I think they're running from Utah. <laughs> they're like, dude, like Lincoln Riley. He is he is fed up. He can't he can't beat Utah. No, and he's lost twice with Caleb Williams. It's kind of funny. It it really is hysterical. It's comical. It it is. I, I I mean I love it I I fucking hate USC I don't even I don't really like Lincoln Riley I don't have any reason why I don't like Lincoln Riley I just don't like Lincoln Riley Yeah I think he, he, I he's think... up there in the same category as um, Lane Kiffin I just don't like their face I want to punch their face their punchable face Yeah I just want to punch their faces Yeah I don't know why it has nothing like we destroyed Lincoln Riley when he was at Oklahoma I had nothing against Lincoln Riley like I do Lane Kiffin I just I don't know I don't like him. I just think he is a good offensive coordinator. He just he isn't a good head coach because none of his defenses have ever done anything, and he he has he, honestly he hasn't even touched a national championship. No, I mean he's gone to the playoffs, but he's lost every time. He got I mean he had a, the worst first half of any team in any postseason. Got, Actually got pummeled, pummeled yeah. by LSU in 2019. Right. Um, USC pummeled somebody in 2004. I can't remember. Pete Carroll was the coach, and it was like, I'm talking like 40 to nothing in the first half. I can't remember who they played. They might have played Oklahoma. 
Yeah, but that's Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll's an actual good coach. I, I understand that, but like it, I'm talking about, I said I haven't seen a first half like that in, in oh, ever. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, Except gotcha. for that USC game. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Mine went back way back. Way back, yeah. Ba- way back in the archives. Right. Well, this was that, that was where my hatred for USC was born. Gotcha. So, you know, I had to go back there. Um, anyways, congratulations, Utah. Um, I was going to end there, but uh, we have uh, – we have something fun to talk about up there in Ann Arbor. Um, Michigan versus Michigan State. Now, we're not talking about the game because it was like 100 to nothing. It was 49 to zero. It, it almost seemed like Michigan knew exactly what Michigan State was calling. Yes. The, you One would think, yeah. I mean, the way the game was played, it was almost like they, they knew every step they were going to take before they even took it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I mean... Are they fortune tellers? Did they see the future? Maybe something like I that. I think they they might have talked to some you know creepy little woman wearing black, and they told them told them the future. Or maybe they're just really good friends with Bill Belichick. I don't know. Ooh, I like that take there. <clears throat> I is this a new Spygate? Well, so what we're talking about is uh, stealing signs. I think uh, not stealing signs, just uh, yeah, stealing signs. Right? It's stealing signs. Stealing yep. signs. Um, the Michigan sideline. It was clear that they were watching the Michigan State sideline and reacting to specific play calls um, in certain ways. So, like whenever Michigan State would call a play, I remember there was one time where you could see the entire Michigan. Uh, Michigan State called a play and Michigan sideline basically pointed up to the sky, meaning pass the ball. They're going to pass the ball. Yeah. Now, here's my thing. I don't understand why this is why why this is illegal. Like or why this is a big problem. I was kind of thinking the same thing. Why is this such a big problem? If they're going to use the same fucking signs at week in week out, that's on you, brother. Anybody in the fucking stands can literally just watch them make or call plays and memorize it. Like yeah. they have people with with photographic memories that can see it one time and remember it. Like it's very it's not very difficult. It's on it's it's their fault for using the same goddamn signs every fucking every week. Yeah. No, I I agree. <coughs> and the thing is too is if you actually know the like the the history of the NFL um cuz I actually read, read a book on the biography of like Bill Belichick just cuz he's a fascinating guy nerd, One, nerd yeah whatever um but he actually one of the things that he used to do as of kind of and they said maybe the origins of him cheating he used to with he was the video broadcaster for um for i forgot which uh nfl franchise but he would withheld the so basically they would have an exchange of uh a game film from the previous game mm-hmm. that they would actually have to give to the opposing team and he would with high uh, withheld that game film giving it to that game film um people say purposely but they would he would always give it to the other team late like maybe like a day late or something like that and because then the other team would get frustrated a little bit because it was like oh he's just not being punctual but at the same time it almost seemed like he was trying now looking back at it hindsight he was trying to get a competitive advantage right you know by withholding like they have a, a day less to actually review that film but point being in the NFL, they exchange those uh, the game film. I think they do the same thing in college. We did I mean, we did it in high school. Right? Yeah. So I what's mean, what's the point? What's the part of like somebody actually going on on to the game and actually you know you know videoing it themselves, which is exactly what they're getting accused for. Right. I don't. I don't know. I, I, I look like Spygate didn't really make much sense to me. I didn't really understand it. Um. <clears throat> It was a big, it was a huge deal. Again, they're making the calls on the sideline, and just like in baseball, baseball you gotta like straight, you gotta, you gotta switch up the signs, the in the the how you call the the plays because they'll they'll catch on to it. Yeah, every team does. It happens all the time. Change it up, or why well, don't it's 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 twenty twenty three. Let's just put earpieces in all the fucking. Um, players helmets and do like sean payton did have a gigantic denny's menu in front of yourself and cover your fucking mouth yeah 
Yep. It's not that hard. I don't think it's such a big deal. I don't. I, I'm. I'm pro Michigan on this one. If you can figure it out, figure it out. Yeah. If no, you're the, I, if you're the opposing team, do better. It's because the thing is, is what you criticize them for them for doing more work to actually try to get a, a competitive advantage. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's because it's not. I don't. I, that's the thing. They're actually having to memorize these signals in order, and then actually figure it out while they're in game time decisions. I, I don't know. I just. I'm not trying to be like completely in favor for Michigan because I'm I don't really care for them too much, but at the same time, like I don't really see this as a problem. And even though Colin Cowherd doesn't really say much really intelligence on his show, at the same time he did talk about it and he was like, "What if a team like Virginia? What a team? What if a team like Purdue this year did something like that? Were, would the media really be talking about it? No, nobody they wouldn't would give, give a shit." A shit. No, so yeah, it is because it's Michigan and it's their high, their yeah, big time media team. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was interesting, and I don't, care. I, I, I don't see a problem with it. Yeah. Um. All right, let's get to the NFL. Quickly get through Jaguars and Saints because it's getting hard to get excited for these games. Like you know, you wake up on a Thursday or a Sunday or Monday or whatever it is, you get excited to watch your team. I can't get excited for Derek Carr and Pete Car- Carmichael. Well, it's it's kind of reminiscent of like a, a TV show or a, um, a t- movie where you can just predict the exact ending of it. It's not entertaining. No. When no. I can predict the actual offensive plays that the Saints are going to run, it's not fun. Dude, if you're in, and if you're having 50-plus pass attempts and only getting 301 yards, I don't know. It's not, it's not fun. It's just not good. It's uh, – Come on, like Alvin Kamara is fun. That's nice. Um, and I guess the Jaguars are good, so it's not like a terrible loss because we were in it the entire game until the end. Well, well, no, we were, no, we were kind of. Oh, we had to crawl back into it. Right, but we were never completely out of it. And yes, we were, yes, it was just like there was a time at the end of the at the end of the game, like in the fourth quarter, where it looked like we were we might be able to pull this off, and then Foster Moreau missed a bad. I think that was a bad throw. It was a catchable ball, and Foster Moreau, if he was a little bit more athletic, probably should have made that catch. Um, but that would have changed the game. Like it would have been like we were right there in it. I mean, obviously it looks bad because we lost by two scores, but no, we only lost by well, one score. Well, we, oh yeah, we only lost by one. So that would have been yeah, that would have tied it up. It would have tied it up. I, I just think that last play, whenever he tried to do the fade route, which I don't think Derek Carr should ever throw a fade in his entire life. Yeah, I think he's been terrible at it in the entire season, but. If you're going to throw a fade, I think you throw it up to Michael Thomas or Jimmy Graham right. rather than a Chris Olave. Love Chris Olave. I'm not trying to put any knock on him, but I just he's not a fade guy. No. And also, he hasn't been receiving very well uh, to car or, or cars in general. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's another matter. But anyways. Um, so, yeah, we got Indianapolis, Chicago, and Minnesota before the bye. Uh, we got to win all three of those. We got to win all three of those. Indy, um, Anthony Richardson's out. We, so we got Gardner Minshew. Chicago, I don't know if just Justin Fields is going to be back. They're not a very good team. And Minnesota, uh, I don't. they came out of nowhere and beat the Niners yesterday. But um, they're not a very good football team either. So who <clears throat> so, knows the fuck what they're going to do. Right. We need to win all three of those games. Um, but, yeah. Saints, are, Saints suck. It's, it's not fun to watch. It's hard to get excited for them. You got anything else? That's it. All right. Colts versus Browns. This is Browns are getting lucky two weeks in a row. I don't know what is happening, but they're getting lucky. And I don't know if this means that the world's going to end after this football season. But <clears throat> I've I'm on standby. I'm watching every Browns game from here on out. Uh, this was a great game. Minshew mania was all. They, they was kind of back. The mission Gardner Minshew played actually pretty well. He made some mistakes, but he played pretty well. Um, yeah, is uh. So Deshaun Watson is basically a two hundred thirty million dollar cheerleader. I it seems it appears that way. Do they have a quarterback problem in a controversy in Cleveland? Well, I mean, when PJ Walker's winning your games for you, yeah, there might be. There might be. I don't know. Um, one thing I was not a fan, I was not a big fan. This is kind of switching gears, but I wasn't a big fan of the uh, black helmets. No, I hated them. Yeah, I didn't. Like <laughs> not them. a good look. I did not like them. I feel like normally I like the black helmets on on teams, but that with the Colts, I did not like it. I, I the thing is with the Colts, 
the white is the signature look. Yeah. They, they never have any black in any of their logos at all. No, in any of their uniforms either. That, yeah. I didn't like it. No. Uh, bad bad look. You know, get back to the drawing board. We'll, you know, yeah, we're going to we'll improve on that. Figure it out. Um, But yeah, great game. Great game. Um, the game, it, game really did have everything. It did. It, it basically everything you wanted. You know? Miles Garrett jumped over an offense alignment to he, block a field goal. He, he needs to do that every time. I, you know what I thought? I, I didn't realize that you actually can jump over an offense alignment. So you can jump over an offense alignment, but you can't jump over the long snapper. The center, yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Troy Palomaro taught us that. Well, but on what I'm saying for field goals. Right. So you know how they get the penalty for the long snapper if they jump over it. But he just jumped over the offensive Off- lineman. Dude, he's a fucking that- freak. <laughs> it's nuts. He is a fucking freak. <laughs> That's crazy. I oh love it. Gosh. Miles Garrett, is, again, I know the Colts put up 30-plus points on him, but Cleveland's defense is still solid. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Uh, but, yeah, great game. That was fun. I'm gonna watch every. Uh, I'm watching every Browns game here on out. Of course. Um, let's see. Val- Falcons versus Bucks. Two bad teams actually had a decent game. They're both bad. That's just there, there's no other way to. I mean, there, there's no other way to put it. Actually, sorry, they're just both bad. I mean, the NFC South sucks. But Desmond Ritter did not throw an interception, Joe. Did he not? He did not throw an interception. There's no way that's possible. He did not. But he had three fumbles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I see where you went there. So this nice. is uh <clears throat> this is a fun stat. I uh I had to screen screenshot this. So Desmond Ritter interceptions. First game, zero interceptions. Second game, one interception. Third game, zero interceptions. Fourth game, two interceptions. Fifth game, zero interceptions. Sixth game, three interceptions. Uh seventh game, zero interceptions. Mm. You know he's gonna get four interceptions next game. Next game? Next game, he's going to throw for four picks. Oh, it's raising the bar. Yep, yep. So every other game, he's gone up one interception. And I just look for him to have four interceptions next game. I wonder who the who the, who do they play. They play... Do they play a good defense? I don't know. I got to see who they play uh who they play next. It was just a, it was it was a decent game. It was okay. I mean, like they both teams suck, so for what for what it was. Bijan Robinson was held out due to a sickness. Yeah, he was sick. Which they should have watched every single documentary for Michael Jordan and knew that this is a flu game. Right. This is a flu game. Yeah. For, you know, like you put you put Bijan Robinson in the game. He, this is a flu game. He will have his best performance. Yes. If you're going to say he's sick, you got to say a family member died or he sprained his ankle. Outside of practice. Yeah, it's got to be something injury-related or of personal reasons. You can't say sickness. You put that man in the game, right. oh, he yeah. will have the flu game. Because be, Yeah, because if you're it, like, oh, he's out for an illness, I think he's got a cold. I think he's got a cold and he's being a little bitch. Yeah, being a little bitch. Yeah. But, um, yeah, last thing I had on this, um, uh, young Gui Ku, Ku yep. Mr. Clutch. I feel like this guy always gets game winners. He does. He he, he gets put in that opportunity. Yeah, and he no, he he makes them. Yep. I he's probably the MVP of this Falcons team. I agree. Like the best player. I agree. Um, last thing I had is uh, the Bucks are are very one dimensional. They cannot run the football, so just make ba- make Baker Mayfield beat you. That's a, that's basically how you how you win the game. I I, I agree. Uh, let's see. Ravens, Lions. Are the Lions frauds, or are the Ravens just really good? Mm. Is this one of those? If you're the Lions, just throw out the tape. You throw out the tape. Lamar Jackson is really good in, against the NFC. He is very good against. Very the good NFC. against the NFC. Um, I also had a really good game. Twenty-one of twenty-seven, three hundred fifty-seven yards, three touchdowns, nine carries, thirty-six yards in the touchdown. Um, he's looking like he's not as scared to run the ball anymore. I think Dak Prescott's kind of doing the same thing. Like, both of them got injured. They're both kind of scared to run the ball. I think they're getting back to the point where they're so not So you have to scared. rely on the pass, right? which and, being makes him a better passer. Right. Well, he, I think he tried to become a better pocket passer, which him and Dak Prescott, before both before they got injured, they were just killing people with their legs. And that's what made them such a dynamic and great quarterback when it got like especially Dak Prescott, you saw that that drop off when he got hurt and he stopped trying to run the ball as much and throw the ball more. He sucked. So I think they're they're getting less and less scared. 
But yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. I guess, yeah, Lions just burned the tape. Ravens really good. Um, Chargers, Chiefs. I, I, I heard this on a podcast um, couple like last I think last week. I think Justin Herbert might be Philip Rivers. <laughs> He's Philip Rivers 2.0. Yeah, he just he's just another Philip Rivers. Um, it was a great first half, boring second half. I think tra- Travis I think Taylor Swift is like Travis Kelsey's magic potion. Like he she is my Michael's secret stuff. Yeah. Somebody if somebody who's playing the Chiefs later on in the schedule, if they want to pull a Michigan, they need to sabotage that relationship. Okay. How are they going to do that? Well, Taylor Swift's broken up with a lot of people before, so I don't feel like that's that very hard. That's true. That's true. We got we just got to look at our past relationships and see uh, how those how those ended. There, there, there's maybe a pattern. Yeah, I'm sure there's a pattern. I know there, the the pattern. One of the patterns is a banging album comes out, so we could get that. Yeah, it'd be a win win. I mean, it's, the Swifties will get a banging album. The the boys will get football back. <laughs> you know? we'll, get, we'll get our Travis Kelsey back. We'll get Which, Travis I mean, Kelsey. We, no, we have Travis Kelsey. That's the thing. I kind of like them together because Travis Kelsey's been balling out since they've been dating. You and every other fantasy owner. Yes. Yeah, dude. They he has been balling out. It's awesome. Um, yeah, it's it's almost like I, I heard this in a podcast too. Um, but it's almost like when you're at the gym and you see the hot girl, you it pushes you to to want to like try harder. Oh, know? absolutely. Yeah, you see a hot girl, you're like, all right, I need to impress her, so I I put more weight on. You know, I think this is just basically the same thing. It gives you more confidence almost. You're yeah. just like, yeah, let's fucking go. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's like it's basically the Jordan Poole effect. And whenever he sees a baddie in the crowd, he starts just throwing up threes. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Fuck Jordan Poole. I wonder if he's going to be good on the Wizards. He's on the Wizards now, right? He is yeah. on the Wizards. Yeah, I wonder if he's going to be good on the Wizards. Probably not. We'll see. Probably not. Um, all right, yeah. Uh, Chargers, Chiefs, first half great, second half kind of boring, but Chiefs are really fucking good. Chiefs are really good. I don't think the Chargers are that good. Mahomes is 7-2 and two against the Chargers. Yeah, he owns them. He owns everybody in the AFC West. And, no, and during that time, nobody who has scored less than 29 points has won the game. Yeah. So if you win, score if you score twenty nine points, it's not it's not an absolute determinant. It just if you score twenty nine points or more, you will win the game. You most likely will win the game. Yes. Got it. Uh, let's see, real quick, Dolph- Dolphins, Eagles. Are there Dolphins frauds? Uh, they haven't played anybody, and the Eagles kind of exposed them. Uh, I think this is another overreaction. I don't know, man. I mean, no, you're right. This one's not as much of an overreaction as I think the other overreaction that I have no. later on in the podcast. But, um, yeah, no, this is – I think it's a slight overreaction. I, it, but you're right. They haven't played anybody good. Right. So, we'll see. And they, they lost to the pa- – no, they beat the Patriots. Did they lose to the Patriots? I think they might have lost to the Patriots. If I remember – The connect- Dolphins? Collectly. Collectly, yeah, the Dolphins. I think they lost to the Patriots, right? No, they beat the Patriots. No, they, they lost beat, to the Jets, they didn't they? To, they lost to the no, they lost to uh, the Bills. They haven't played the Jets. Uh, they, they've lost to the Bills and the Eagles. They play the Patriots next week. So who did the Jets beat? That was the undefeated team. Uh, the Eagles. The Eagles. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that was it. So same game. Uh, yeah, Eagles are really good. Eagles are really good. Dolphins. We'll see if they're frauds or not. We'll see next week if they're frauds. If they lose to the Patriots, they're frauds. I will say the Eagles are kind of the Chiefs now to the refs. Got a lot of no calls on this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Got a lot of no calls that should have been calls. Um, I don't know what you think about the jerseys. I love the Kelly Green, but it was it was kind of funny that people were just like, oh, no, those aren't the Kelly Green jerseys anymore. Those are the Hulu has live sports jerseys. <laughs> right. No, that's that's funny. I feel like when the Eagles do a rebrand, which, you know, a lot of franchises do from time to time, I feel like they're going to go back to the Kelly Green. I don't think they should. I think they should leave it in the 90s. I, I like the know. I like the throwbacks every now and then, but I think they need to go to a different... I, I like the color that they have now. It's kind of cool. I think Dark green? Yeah, it's... it's, it's, it's I, I, I don't know. It I is would, what it is. If I was a fan of the Eagles, I would prefer the Kelly Green. The Kelly Green? I don't know. I think they should do something different. I don't I don't know what though. I don't know what they would do because there's like the Jets have green, they have green. Seattle has a, a, the lighter green. They have the yeah, green, they, hi- they highlighter have the, green. The, the highlighter, the neon. 
So I don't know what they would do. I guess Kelly Green. Yeah, go back to fucking Kelly Green. Go to the Kelly Green. All right. Um, real quick, 49ers versus Vikings. Are the 49ers in trouble? Uh, this is the overreaction that I had. This is the overreaction. Everybody, gosh, I mean, look, everybody was like, Oh, are the 49ers fraud? The 49ers are fraud. I don't Brock think they're fraud. I don't think they're frauds. I think they're in trouble. Like Brock I think Purdy something, something's is, is a fraud. I think like I, I think no. I think it's like a, a nice fucking antique car. Like a sixty nine <clears throat> Chevy or whatever. I don't know. Whatever whatever car you're trying to build up. But there's just like, and it's everything's pretty much done. But there's one piece, like you need an, a new alternator or something like that. It's like I think it's just, it's Are just. You're just saying that Debo Samuel needs to come back. Pretty much, I think they're just missing. <laughs> they're missing one piece, and I don't know if it's all Debo Samuel. I don't, I don't know what it is. It might just, it might be Debo Samuel. It might, he might be the guy, the alternator that makes the, the car start and go. He just, they, they just look like they're missing one little piece, something. I don't yeah. know. Well, you also caught a team that's in desperation. I mean, the Vikings are definitely in desperation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Kirk Cousin, as he pointed out in his press, uh, you know, post-game press press, uh, conference and press interviews, he, um, if he doesn't get any sacks during primetime, he will win. (coughs) Yeah, (laughs) that is true. So, um, but I just, I think it's just an overreaction. I mean, look, I'm not saying... Brock Purdy is the best quarterback in the league, but at the same time, you don't have to be the best quarterback in the league to play in Kyle Shanahan's offense. Also, the all the Brock Purdy haters are just pouncing on. Oh, they're just right pouncing. He has not he has not played well the last two weeks. Not not the last two weeks, but at the same time, like he's a quarterback in the NFL. There's going to be some weeks he doesn't play well. Like I think this is a huge overreaction. I think he'll bounce back at some point. Um, I don't know. I, Addison I, Jordan Addison had a great a breakout game. That was nice. They're going to be, dude. Him and Jay Jetta's one and two is going to be stupid nice if they if the Vikings can manage to keep Je- Justin Jefferson there. Well, I was going to say if they can kind of hold on until Jefferson gets back. This is their schedule right now. So they got the Packers, who's not looking really good. Not, not good at all. Falcons, even though they're the head of the NFC South, that they suck. They suck. The Saints, they suck. Uh, Broncos, Bears, Raiders, and Bengals. That is, if you if you take out the Bengals, that is all the bottom tier teams in the NFL. There's only one team that has four wins on that schedule, and that's the Falcons. Not even the Bengals. Not even the Bengals. But I I, I wouldn't I would put the Bengals over all those teams. But yeah, no, they, those all all of those teams besides the Bengals are bottom tier teams. So, like, there's a good chance that the Vikings can make a run. Go on a little bit of a run here? Yeah. When does Jay Jettas get back? I mean, he's out for at least – he was at least four, four weeks. Right. So, I don't know if it's I think three it's weeks been, it's now. It's been two weeks. It's been two weeks? Yeah, so he's got two more weeks at least. But, yeah, that was a, that was, that was a weird one. That was something I was not expecting. Yeah. <laughs> big, big episode of not expecting things. Not expecting the things that happened, but – you got anything else? Uh, that's it. All right, Major League Baseball. We got the Diamondbacks playing the uh, the Phillies tonight in Game Seven. We had Game Seven yesterday. That was weird. The Rangers Astros series. The visiting team won every single game. That's so weird. That's the only the second time in MLB history that that has happened in the postseason. When's the first time? I don't know. I don't know, but I just saw that. Oh, you got to figure out when the first time is. I don't care. I just, so the <laughs> fact that any time that I see like a top three thing in the MLB, like because there's been stats since eighteen fucking sixty, the MLB is just a giant stat game. So when you see something that's the second time it's ever been done, yeah, that's like that's more rare than a fucking perfect game. Yeah, I know, but for my curiosity, well, now go it's look ki- it up. Now it's killing it me. Um, but yeah, so we got Game Seven tonight. I hope the Phillies win. I think the World Series needs to be the Phillies and the Rangers. Um, redemption tour. I think for the Phillies, I, I I just like their team. I think their team. I mean, and, and this has nothing to do with me being biased because Aaron Nola is their ace. Um, I like Bryce Harper. I think Bryce Harper's great for the sport of baseball. Castellanos is awesome. Like Real Muto is good. Like I like their their team is just. I think I I, I, I just love their team. I love Craig Kimbrell. He was always my guy back in the day. Um, I don't know. They just they, they they're just really really good. I think Craig Kimbrell's on there. Craig, yeah, Craig Kimbrell's on their team. Um, 
I'm just I'm really looking forward to seeing the Phillies in there. Let's see what what is the uh, what is the score right now? Did you uh, the game game's playing on right now? Yeah, no, I know it's on right now. It was one nothing to Diamondbacks in the middle of the first. The uh, looks like two one Phillies. Yep, two one Phillies. Top of the fifth. Good deal. Let's Holy go, baby. Holy cow! Let's go. Um, but yeah, you got anything else on the uh, MLB playoffs? We're uh, I'm I'm looking forward to the World Series, man. This is going to be fucking awesome. Yeah, it's going to be great, but yeah, that's about it. All right, we will uh, see you all next week. Love you all. Later.